Hey, welcome to my channel, Hydronic Heating Enthusiast. And what you are looking at is two diverter tees or monoflow tees that were made by the Bell & Gossage Company uh, probably uh, sometime around World War II. Um, let's get on the other side. I think you might be able to make out the logo of Bell and & Gossage and the directional flow arrow. And these are two T's put very close together because what probably happened was there was a radiator that was below the, uh, below the supply line. And when that happens, you need to have two monoflow tees right next to each other in order to direct the flow. Uh, these guys are above the line, and so you only need one to divert the flow uh, to the various uh, heating units above. But what happened was somebody decided they didn't want the radiator there anymore, and so it was found to be capped off. What that does is that interferes with the overall flow of the system because inside those monoflow tees uh, is a restrictor. So in order to restore the flow uh, characteristics, which were the design characteristics then, um, you are advised to uh, add a, a circuit bypass, as it were, uh, and any chance I can add a drain, I add a drain. So let me uh, show you the uh, documentation on that uh, so you can uh, double check what's what. Uh, what I have here is a copy of a book by Dan Holohan called How Come? And uh, he devotes at least one chapter on uh, diverter T or monoflow T's. And here he says, Suppose I just want to get rid of a radiator, do I have to get rid of the diverter tees or can I just cap them off? Um, you either have to get rid of the diverter tees, you, but you can't cap them off. You have to, uh, you are advised to uh, run the bypass. And uh, there he has a picture of how the diverter tee works. It's got a Venturi in there. And he devotes other chapters, or excuse me, other questions and sections on there to on delineating how that works. So that's a little bit of uh, advice on if you have somebody who says, hey, I've got a, uh, a radiator convector that doesn't work, and you go to bleed it, and you get water, so it's not an air problem. That means you've got a flow problem. And uh, so you have to look at and go to the basement and look for capped off uh, venturi tees or diverter tees and restore the flow in order to get the flow uh, to work, to have enough flow, because you have restrictors in each of the tees. The other thing which uh, is a good idea is to pay attention to the original circulator. Um, basically, you need a fairly large uh, circulator in order to uh, make it work, unfortunately. You can't get away with the Taco 007 that usually comes with. You have to uh, restore the flow characteristics. And what you're looking at there is a 0012 uh, in order to uh, generate the um, required flow. Um, can work. Uh, here's a, a handbook from 1949, Bell & Gossage, uh, talking about uh, design characteristics for monoflow tees, and generally they have a big, uh, big circulator there because each uh, T is a restrictor, and you can't get away with a little tiny circulator. Um, I hope this is useful. So if you have come across uh, a customer who does not uh, have enough uh, uh, heat coming out of their units because they have a monoflow system. Um, you want to look for the proper size circulator and you want to look for capped off, improperly capped off uh, monoflow or venturi fees. Thank you very much for your support and I'll see you on the next one.